Hello, my friends. And now here we are again for another fantastic Revit tip. <laughs> All right, today's Revit tip <clears throat> is about dependent views. There's some controversy out there about why they give us the ability to create dependent views. Because you've seen on screen, when you right click on a view, you have three options. Three options, okay? The top option is duplicate. And what that does is it duplicates the view. It'll create another view of that, but it will also bring with it anything that creates another view. Um, kind of like the, mm, the call outs will come with it. The section markers will come with it. Elevation markers come with it. Those kind of things. But all the other annotation drops out, all right? But if you pick the second option, it's duplicate with detail. And that, my friends, makes an identical copy in every way, 100%. It's a duplicate of your view, period. Duplicate with detailing is what it's called, okay? Brings every single dimension and tag and piece of annotation and text and anything, lines, anything that you've drawn in there, it will bring it. So duplicate as a, with detailing is to get a perfect exact copy. Okay, and then you'll notice there's a third option, duplicate as dependent. And in my humble opinion, that's, <laughs> well, that's what this video is about. That's not my humble opinion that this video is about. It is about. My humble opinion is you only, only, only ever use duplicate as a dependent if your drawing, your building will not fit on a sheet. See, if your building is too long to fit or, or does a big L shape or something and it cannot fit on the sheet, you have to duplicate the view with dependents. And those dependents are like, the left side, the right side, the north wing, the east wing, whatever. It's all the parts. And you never can drag the main parent view onto a sheet because it's too big. So when you create the, the dependent views underneath it, those are what you bring onto the sheets. All right. And now we're going to go do it. And I'm going to show you how this works. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I hit share button. And there we go. Okay. Who's your BIM manager? All right, here we go. Let me get your fake mic that's bigger here so we can see what we're doing. All right, here's our little building. It's honestly not really that big. But for today's demonstration, let's just say this plan is way too big. It cannot fit on a sheet, just can't do it. And I'll show you the reason why you go ahead and instead of duplicating with detailing and just cropping to the left and the right, could you do that? Yes, but you're gonna end up duplicating your efforts because you're gonna have to add annotation to both views. But watch this. <clears throat> Okay, so here's how, here's how you go about it. You right click, this is our plan right here. Look at that gorgeous little plan. We're gonna right click on it. And there's what I'm talking about earlier. Remember I told you there was duplicate and there's duplicate with detailing. You already know what those are. Duplicate as a dependent. The third one here, I'm gonna click it. And look what it does. It puts a drop down, a child view is what it's called underneath it's a dependent view underneath the main view and i'm going to right click and i'm going to rename this one for ease i'm going to call it right r-i-g-h-t right side right side okay and then i'm going to go back to the parent right click again and do the same thing duplicate the view as a dependent and another one pops in and this one i'm going to rename you guessed it, left side, okay? All right, now, 
I'm in the left side. So what I want to do, I'm in the left side. I'm going to crop because this thing cannot fit on a sheet. Oh, so gigantic. I'm going to crop. I just grab this guy and I crop it down to what does fit on the sheet. You guys with me? That is the left side. Oh, oops, wrong way. La la la, Mike's gone the wrong way. Okay, this is the left side. I'm in the left view. Uh, left, right, left. Okay, here we go. Left, my other left. Okay, so now look, over here, we have this guy is in the left side, okay? And now I'm gonna go to the right view and I'm going to click and I'm gonna bring this over. And now this is the right side. Okay, you guys with me? The reason that you do this, because I don't want to go into this view and go put in um, window tags, door tags in this view, and then go to the other one, the left side, and put a window tags, door tags, wall tags, all the annotation. It's so much easier. Revit allows you to stay in the parent view. There, I'm in the parent view and I'm gonna put my tags in. So watch, I'm gonna come up here to annotate. I'm gonna click on tag all and I'm gonna tag all my windows. Okay, bam. Now look, it tagged all the windows in the parent view. And let me just show you in the dependence. I'm gonna to go to the left side. Look at that. The tags are here and in the right side, the tags are here. It uh, The dependent views are looking at the parent view for all their annotation needs. So you only have to annotate in the parent view and it takes care of it automatically in the dependent views. You don't have to go annotate all the different dependents because you might have a big giant T-shaped building or I-shaped building where you have wing lower left, wing A, wing B, wing C, D, and E. You don't have to open each one and do the annotation. Just go to the parent view and put in your annotation there, okay? So let's go back to the parent view. Let me do my door tags, okay? Door tags. I'm going to say tag all doors. Ready and okay, bam. So all the doors got tagged. If I go to the left side, they, the doors that are visible there are tagged. And on the right side, the doors that are visible there, right side, are tagged. <laughs> okay, so I think you understand that. Now, now comes the fun part when you have to put in a, um, a match line. So let me go to the sheet. Let's just go. Now I've got my first floor plan sheet. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna click on that. Actually, I don't need to open it. I am going to rename it. Let's go here. Look at this. I'm going to rename this A101 left side. Okay. And oh, not left side. I'm just going to go A. A101A, and I'm going to write left side. Okay. On my sheet. And I'm gonna right click on it and duplicate this. I'm just gonna duplicate an empty sheet. And look what it said, it did. It said 101B, that's good, but I'm going to rename that to be not the left side copy one, but the right side, okay? So now I have a sheet set up for these two gigantic views that wouldn't fit, okay? So on the left side, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna drag, not the parent view because it can't fit on the sheet. You guys with me? I pull the left side and I place it on the sheet. Bam, there's my left side, okay? First floor, left side. And then I come down and I open up the right side and I drag that view over here, okay? There, okay? First floor plan, it's the right side. Now, let's go back to the parent view for a second. I wanna show you something pretty cool. I'm gonna expand out 
these the crop regions so you can see something here the crop regions of the other two views the dependent views are dash and i'm going to make this one on the left smaller so you can kind of see it better all right you guys with me look at this this little dashed one is for the left side and this bigger dashed one's for the right side all i did was I quickly, um, let me just explain. The, the left and the right are visible here and you need to now put in a match line. The match line goes at the overlap of these two um, dashed cropping regions. You guys with me? So what you do to put in a match line, you go to the view tab and there's a button at the top, match line, okay? Click on that. And you don't draw it over here on the right or the left. You draw it where these two, you draw it right somewhere where the two crop regions overlap. So I'm gonna put it right here, okay? And I, you just draw yourself a magenta line and as long as it's drawn in between the two, then you'll be able to see it in both views. So I'm gonna check the little box of finish mode and there it is, okay? I'm in the overall plan and I just put in a match line. So because I drew the match line where the two crop regions overlap, I should be able to see it in both views. So I'm gonna to go to my left and there it is, okay? And I'm gonna to go to the right side and there it is. Perfect. Now we need a special character, a special tool in Revit called a view reference. So I'm going to go back here to my parent view. Okay. This is my parent view. You guys recognize it. See that? Parent view. And watch this. Up here on the view tab, right next to match line tool is view reference. We're going to click on that. I'm going to bring my view reference over here. And right here, the, the view that I'm dealing with is the floor, the left side is going to be, look, left side. So on the drop down, I change it to, this is the parent. I don't wanna click on the parent. I want it to say left side. And I'm gonna place that annotation over on the left. Okay, left, click Mike. There, <clears throat> left. And then I wanna put another one. I'm gonna rotate it actually. I like rotating these things. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, okay? I'm just gonna put it, I'm gonna rotate and put it right there, okay? That's on the left side of the line. And now I'm gonna put in a new view reference. I'm gonna tell it to be the right side. You guys with me? Right side, okay? And I'm going to place it right there, Wait, right? Place it, just drop it, Mike. How come I can't drop it? Oh, there it is, okay. And I'm going to rotate it up to 90 degrees. And if you guys are looking, you might be able to see that one says 101A and one says 101B. It knows what sheet they're on, okay? And here's a very fun, fun fact for you. Factoid number seven, wait for it. The... If I go to the left side, it tells me if you want to go, okay, we're on the left side. If you want to go over to the right side, you go to 101B. You guys with me? And, and when I open up the right side, it says, hey, if you want to go over to the other side, it's 101A. What it does is it closes and blocks out the one Wait, I'm in there. Yeah, it, let me make sure I got this right. Okay, this one is, we're in the right side. Oh, this, uh, when I'm in the right side, I need to say right side. And the left side, I need to say left side. All right. All right, I messed up. Okay, here, here's what I got. <clears throat> this, when you're in the left side, <laughs> When you're in the left side view, it says, go to 101B to get to the right. 
And when you're in the right side view, it says go to 101A to get to the left, okay? Sorry about that. So in the plan, look at this. You just make sure that you put the correct one. I'm in the parent view right now, and I'm just gonna pick this one. And on the left side of the match line, you put the one that references the left side. And here on the right side, of the match line, you put the one that targets the right side. Sorry about the little bit of confusion there, but you just put them on the correct side of the match line and they will show up correctly automatically in your different views. And if you go to the sheet that has the left side, it shows correctly there as well. So anyways, I just wanted you guys to see how dependent views work and how you can get a match line in there and you can also put a view reference that references the other side one quick thing that's kind of fun if you're in the left view and you're sitting here looking at it and you want to get to the right view you can actually double click on the view reference for the right view if i double click on this this reference it takes me instantly to the other view and I can do what I want to and look around and work on it here. But if I want to get back to the other side, I can just double click on the view reference. Bink, and it takes me to the other side. That's a pretty cool tip. All right, man. Put all your annotation for the views right here on the parent view. And it will push automatically to the others. I really hope, my friends, that that Reddit tip helped you guys to understand why they made an option for dependent views. And in my humble opinion, it is only when your view or your building footprint is too large to fit on a sheet and you got to break it into smaller pieces. All right. Well, that's it for today. You have a fantastic day. And until we meet again, happy riveting. All right. Bye-bye.